Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I would like to welcome you all uh, to uh, this session of today, which is 16th uh, meeting of uh, RECA, which stands for Regional Energy Cooperation in Central and South Asia, and which will be taking place today in a hybrid format. Um, and I will be your moderator today. Um, this session, session this year is hosted by uh, Kazakhstan and organized jointly uh, by Kazenergy Association, the World Energy Council and the Secretariat of the International Energy Charter. Uh, and the title of today's uh, session are, is uh, New National Initiatives and Partnerships. Before I start giving the floor to uh, our key speakers and presenters today, uh, please allow me my capacity as a moderator uh, to make a short introduction on um, a few main ideas behind um, uh, RECA meetings, uh, our today's topic and, and what, we, what our intentions and aspirations are with regard to this session today. And before I go into substance, uh, just a small rem remark, as this is a hybrid event. Um, it dictates uh, an imposition of certain limitations, one of which is related to languages. So with your permission, I will be uh, switching between um, uh, English and Russian when I am introducing uh, a speaker. Now, we have five speakers today uh, on the panel. Um, not including myself, uh, three of whom uh, have managed to attend this meeting uh, live in person. And we are also thankful um, to our um, remote virtual uh, two speakers uh, who kindly agreed to uh, make their interventions. And uh, we are happy to see them all joining us. Now, let me jump back to what I have just started with. The general design behind um, uh, RECA meetings for the last decade, and we have started RECA meetings regularly in 2010, uh, was to accommodate um, and entertain uh, exchange of opinions, uh, ideas, uh, proposals of solutions to pertinent issues and um, concerns. Uh, share uh, experiences, achievements, uh, and otherwise, um, otherwise discuss any other matters uh, and affairs of significance, all of which are related to uh, regional energy cooperation in Central and South Asia. As you can imagine, uh, what I have just said may encompass a lot of things, uh, but there are a few that I wanted to outline. Um, first one would be to develop uh, and generally design um, um, and intensify cross-border uh, energy cooperation, considering the uniqueness of each country participating in, in, in the RECA uh, uh, type of form of meetings. Uh, second, the need for attracting investments to develop adequate cross-border uh, energy trade and transit infrastructure. Third would be the measures taken by the participating countries um, to create uh, a common energy market. Fourth uh, um, would be the development of model guidelines for energy related um, uh, investments. Uh, and very importantly, uh, the role of the Energy Charter Treaty in facilitating uh, mutually beneficial um, and uh, balanced cross-border trade based on the principle of based on the principles that are embodied in the Energy Charter uh, Treaty. Um, while many of these topics that I have mentioned retain their salience and value today, uh, there are a few more that have uh, joined the club, so to say, and. Uh, while it will not be possible to dive into these uh, matters and areas, uh, given the, the chronographical and, and, and uh, circumstantial uh, limitations, uh, I hope that we can at least crack them open, as they say, 
And so these are the issues that uh, uh, we propose to, to bring into the table um, that will traditionally, that, that will uh, be discussed together with traditional uh, RECA um, matters. So uh, we are talking about the future of energy systems uh, in Central and South Asia. We will be talking about the potency of natural gas becoming the main competitor of uh, the renewable energy in the region, risks and opportunities of Central Asian and South Asian countries um, posed uh, in the energy transi transition and decarbonization uh, process, shifting investment trends uh, from the standpoint of energy balance and potentials for integrating new and conventional energy sources uh, in Central and South Asia. Now, this looks like a very packed agenda, but uh, nevertheless, um, we will try to be brief, but at the same time, very concrete. So you are all uh, well. You are all very welcome to ask questions. And now I am honored to um, pass the microphone uh, to our first keynote address uh, to His Excellency Dr. Urban Rusnak, Secretary General of the International Energy Charter, who also happens to have a full energy background. Dr. Rusnak has been in his capacity as the Secretary General at the forefront of, of uh, uh, tackling new and previously unexposed uh, energy related areas and developments and has been credited with launching uh, the efforts for the modernization process of the energy charter treaty. And as the head of the international organization created under the unique and sole uh, international legal instrument governing all energy issues such as the energy charter treaty. Um, he has a unique reflection uh, to all sorts of um, matters, direct and indirect, uh, of the international energy landscape. Dr. Rusnak, we are delighted to have you here today with us at this unique event. Please. Thank you very much, Ruslan, uh, dear friends and colleagues, the panel participants. First of all, on behalf of the Secretary of the Energy Charter Treaty, and my behalf, let me express my respect and gratitude to the Kazakh side for the hospitality provided and assistance in resolving all organization issues. We, have been, we woke up today morning in Nur Sultan the snowy landscape. And I think this snowy landscape do not reflect the reality we are living here uh, those days in Kazakhstan. A warm welcome, a traditional hospitality is a landmark as it was always the case. For many years, the Kazakhstan hosted the Kaz Energy Eurasian Forum and which established itself as a prestigious annual conference of the international energy industry at the global energy agenda. In addition, it is gratifying to note that Kazakhstan, having awarded the right to host the World Energy Week this year, has attracted significant attention from the international community, which will eventually allow integrating joint goals and developing new mechanisms for the further development of world energy. Unfortunately, however, the pandemic made adjustments to our activities. Still, despite the former complexity of the situation, the government of Kazakhstan has managed in this difficult time for us, successfully organized this high-level platform to promote regional dialogue. This session is integrated and organized by the Secretary of the International Energy Charter, jointly with World Energy Council, dedicated to the national initiatives in the energy system of Central Asia, with the assistance of the Kazakhstan's association, Gaz Energy. This year, we decided to combine our annual meeting of the Task Force for Regional Energy Cooperation in Central Asia with this platform. Today, we are opening the 16th 
RECA meeting, where participants are, have the opportunity to exchange and experience discuss the implementation of regional projects, including the role of cross-border electricity trade and ensuring the, the regional energy security. The meeting program includes a presentation on the proposed topic and will be interesting for all of us to learn about the current advances and changes in the energy activities and landscape in Central Asia. Let me also note that several Central Asian countries have been active members of the Energy Charter Treaty since it has entered into force almost 30 years ago. Thus, to date, the Energy Charter Treaty is the only legally binding document for international energy cooperation. Over the past 10 years, we have jointly managed to create the foundation of sustainable and secure regional energy trade in Central Asia. I'm sure that today the Central Asian countries have managed to build a joint foreign policy strategy aimed at further strengthening regional energy security. Dear participants, Today, our goal is to ensure the economic growth by strengthening mutual trust and developing mutually beneficial and equal cooperation among the parties in Central Asia. Let me note that the energy charter process has a significant role in ensuring the stable development at the regional level at the present stage. The Central Asian countries play an essential role in the energy charter process. We are still facing a difficult task to de of developing adequate mechanisms and rules for international cooperation in the energy sector, taking into account the current changes. First, raising the requirement for improving investment climate. Second, emergence of new, new players on the global energy markets. Third, changing export strategies, including diversification of energy supplies. And, fourth, Last but not least, the volatility of world oil and gas prices. In this regard, the ongoing modernization of the Energy Charter Treaty will make it possible to adapt the energy sector to the new realities. We are working with participating countries on implementing the sets of the goals effectively. In turn, this is confirmed by joint communique of the 16th meeting of the EU Central Asian Ministerial Conference which was held by, at the end of 2020, where the active participation of Central Asian countries in the ongoing negotiation on the Energy Charter Treaty modernization process was particularly highlighted. Let me emphasize that the priority areas of the treaty modernization process for the Central Asian countries today are transit of energy resources, investment, and access to infrastructure and other issues. Moreover, we welcome the desire of Central Asian countries to follow the fundamental principles of energy transit, such as maintaining a balance of economic interests and obtaining unhindered access to new market. In addition, let me note that the ECT also contains the concept of an agreement on economic integration. In this, in this regard, the Secretary is currently working together with the parties of the treaty in defining the role of a regional economic integration organization. Dear colleagues, today's focus is on the energy security issues, the role of traditional energy resources, and the new alternative energy sources. Through constructive dialogue, we have significantly broadened the scope of mutually beneficial cooperation in the energy sector. Countries may have significant achievements in the development of traditional energy sources and have now started to implement a renewable energy projects. We are now faced with the fact that the renewables are a major trend in the world energy. The European Union is investing heavily in development of alternative energy. Today, the this is corroborated with the introduction of the EU's carbon border adjustment the so-called Green Deal, which aims to achieve the carbon neutrality up to 55% by 2030. Central Asian countries have considerable potential for wind and solar energy. We believe that large-scale implementation of this type of project will benefit the current energy consumption and will contribute 
to a graduate reduction of the carbon footprint in the electricity generation system. It should be noted that global change in the Paris Agreement are already reoriented the investment process toward the clean technologies. In fact, today many international development institutions have already withdrawn the funding for the coal generation and other technologies which with significant negative impact on the climate and environment. Dear colleagues and participants of the session, I'm sure that today's joint work with you will contribute to strengthening regional energy cooperation and helps to assess the existing process. Summing up, I would like to wish all the participants a fruitful work, success, and express also my gratitude to the Kazakh side for this cooperation and invitation to participate for this undoubtedly important event. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Your Excellency. Um, I think you've mentioned some of the most important uh, things that um, uh, this uh, meeting will uh, try to untap, and I hope uh, we will have another opportunity of you sharing uh, with us your uh, thoughts and ideas. Um, now I would like to um, introduce our next speaker, um, and Mr. Aset Magaov, who is uh, the Vice Minister of Energy of the Republic of Kazakhstan. Mr. Magaov comes from the traditional energy background. In the past, he uh, worked uh, in a number of uh, oil and gas companies in Kazakhstan, including the National Oil and Gas Company. And of note, he was also a Director General of the Kazakh Energy Association. Uh, his rich experience and acquired insight, I think, will be uh, particularly instrumental in our today's uh, session as we talk about the new energy versus old energy, uh, so to speak. Uh, Mr. McGough, uh, thank you for joining us, and the floor is yours. Distinguished colleagues, participants of the session, first of all, I would like to congratulate all of you that despite pandemic, we managed to gather here quite a representative uh, conference. And the fact that the conference is organized with online participation helped us expanding the membership, the participation, and to organize joint plenary session with the international agencies. Let me welcome you to this event. Kazakhstan pays a lot of attention to the development of cooperation under the Central Asia partnership based on the principle of mutual trust, pragmatism, and balance of interests. And these principles created the strong foundation for the uh, ensuring safety, security, development of trade and economic collaboration, cultural, humanitarian, and energy cooperation. Kazakhstan contributes uh, significantly into the in energy security in Asia. The geopolitical and strategic location of Kazakhstan ensures stable transit of oil and gas from Central Asia, both eastwards and westwards, allowing all the Central Asian countries enhancing their transport capacity. In Russian times, in, in the Soviet times, the region successfully functioned the system of uh, water and energy facilities of Kazakhstan, Urbanistan, Kyrgyzstan, and Uzbekistan, and Tajikistan, that included 63 power plants that it enhanced the by regulation of peak loads and uh, outflows of electricity, the sustainability of operations of en energy systems of each of the countries. I believe that now we have all the opportunities to enhance our collaboration in electricity. Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, and Kazakhstan uh, have the major reserves of natural gas. I suppose, I suppose, propose that the countries will coordinate their efforts to implement the existing capacity of gas chemical industry that will enhance the export opportunities to take a niche in the global market. For this, uh, we would need to enhance the efficiency of uh, production by processing and uh, production of goods with higher added value. 
globally at the moment, uh, the demand is growing for the products produced from gas commodity. And in addition to having a high demand for the products, the low indicators for the volume of emissions to the environment are also important. Based on the data of International Energy Agency by 2030, this indicator of use of gas chemical raw material will exceed 40%. Chalium, methanol, ammonia, ethylene, polyethylene will become the key drivers of growth. Our countries are linked by major gas trunks, in particular, Already in the Soviet times, uh, the gas pipeline from Central Asia to center was built uh, going via Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, and Kazakhstan towards Russia. At the same time, the gas pipeline from Central Asia to China goes from Turkmenistan towards uh, PRC via Kazakhstan and uh, Bukhar gas uh, region of uh, of Kyrgyzstan is linked uh, via Tashkent Bishkek Almaty gas pipeline. We can also see the additional opportunities for the wider cooperation and involvement of the joint infrastructure projects, such as expansion of railways and uh, seaport capacities, construction of um, electricity lines and pipelines. The economies of our countries are closely interlinked and uh, interrelated. We have to apply all possible efforts to preserve the existing capacity and strengthen the trade and economic relations in fuel and energy sectors between our countries. To achieve the global purpose of the Paris Agreement, more than 100 countries already committed to achieve carbon neutrality by 2050. Even more countries, including the developing ones, are putting the energy policy the, to include the priorities of environment and alternative source of electricity that results in reduction of dependence of hydrocarbons. In this regards, one of the key areas for cooperation would involve the joint operations for the development of renewables. Central Asian region has a vast capacity to implement uh, the renewables projects. The favorable natural and climatic conditions and also available areas in the countries uh, would make our projects more efficient. For us, uh, this is not a fashionable trend. This is a condition for the future development of energy sector. Kazakhstan, according to the, its objectives under the green economy concept, has already achieved the 3% share of renewables in the overall energy balance of the country. Our intention to increase this share to 60% by 2025, to 15% by 2030, and not less than 50% by 2050. One of the key criteria for the sector development is the strong legislation and institutional framework. This was the prerequisite to implement the auction mechanism in Kazakhstan during, for the first time during, since independence that enhanced the investments in renewables. The auctions demonstrated high interest of both uh, domestic and international participants. We are prepared to share this experience with our neighbors and I call my colleagues to work jointly. We are absolutely certain that the parity cooperation and joint efforts of competent bodies in the energy sectors of the Central Asian countries will result in effective uh, joint projects in the energy sector. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Minister Magao. Uh, I think you've mentioned a very interesting thing. Um, um, at the end of your uh, speech, you mentioned uh, the renewables auctions and uh, uh, our previous, a couple of our previous RECA meetings that were held in uh, Ashgabat and uh, I think Almaty uh, were actually focusing on uh, the auction renewables. And we even uh, organized uh, at each RECA session, um, there was a one day devoted specifically to the simulation of, uh, of uh, renewables auctions. 
So I think um, it's, this is very good that you've mentioned it as, as one of the things that um, should be pursued, should be continued to be pursued uh, under the umbrella of regional energy cooperation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, now I would like to move to uh, our next speaker, Mr. Ganbatar Enhuf uh, Tushin, who is the head of the Renewable Energy Division at the Ministry of Energy of Mongolia. Uh, a, couple of in, a couple of important remarks regarding Mongolia is that Mongolia was the first country that hosted, was the country that hosted the very first RECA meeting in September 2010. Uh, second of all, Mongolia is the uh, land, is the country of the, of the so-called NAPSI initiative. You may have heard about it. NAPSI initiative stands for the Northeastern Asian uh, Energy Interconnection Project. It's a big initiative uh, which started in 2015. Uh, it, it is still continuing, but we will probably see the results of uh, this initiative materializing by uh, the end of uh, this decade. And one last remark is that Mongolia will be, the, will be the country chair of the Energy Charter Conference next year. So there will be a lot of things that will happen around that country, specifically on, with an emphasis on regional cooperation. Uh, Mr. Gambatar, uh, please, the floor is yours. I think he, he's joining us from Ulaanbaatar. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, and excellencies, uh, on behalf of the government of Mongolia, Ministry of Energy, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to the organizers of this con uh, conference. Gas uh, Energy, Energy Charter, and uh, World Energy Council. The government of Mongolia is going hand to hand along with international communities to tackle greenhouse gas emissions and environmental degradation in COP21 Paris Agreement. More than five years passed since the adoption of COP21, and government of Mongolia pushed the policy towards more sustainable green world. In the energy sector, we have set ambitious targets of 20% of renewable energy share in total installed capacity until 2020 and 30% of renewable share in 2030. By end of 2020, we have almost reached the target by having 18% of renewable installed capacity uh, from year to zero in 2015. By uh, the private sector driven increase of renewable energy share was mostly by favorable condition offering competitive tariff and tax incentives from government. And we are now more, more than confident to reach the further target of 2030. Even though there are country specific, specific challenges, I believe that targets of renewable energy and sustainable development will meet uh, a certain level by as cross-sectoral initiatives and the improvement in energy efficiency, cost-competitive technologies introduced in recent years. Thus, ever challenging issue is to reach universal agenda of global GHG emission and contain global warming loads, 22% target. Uh, In-depth analysis studies and should be carried out on further ongoing regional and global cooperation in initiatives how it could serve to deliver the expected outcome of 2021. We believe that abundant renewable energy resources would play a role for not only for reaching our country's specific targets, we also believe that it could benefit to supply carbon free energy to Northeast Asian countries. This in initiative, which is known as Northeast Asian Power Interconnection Concern, like uh, Mr. Uh, the chairman was mentioned when introducing Mongolia. Until today, this, uh, several studies were undertaken to reveal the potentials of renewable energy export from Mongolia to neighboring countries. The including Asian Supergrid Bobby Tech study uh, was carried out in collaboration with Energy Transfer Secretariat and the other stakeholders in 2014. Based on this study, we have worked along with VTD 
to address possible solutions and demonstrations for future North East Station power interconnection. Study examined the silver grid interconnection space and considered power grid options between countries in the region starting from 5 gigawatt, 10 gigawatt, and the final 100 gigawatt of power flow. The simulations of possible grid connections shows as the project is uh, economically and te technologically feasible. However, challenges arise when it comes to political barriers and national security issues. We need to focus to find out common grounds for Indian partnership for broader purposes. Establishment of uh, permanent secretaries is offered to enhance cooperation among these countries and attract investment investment and develop further common technical solutions, such as specific regulation for building attractiveness of private, foreign, and local investors in renewable energies, for giving enough visibility on renewable energy policy targets, for ensuring forcing within stable revenues, for guaranteeing the grid operation priority dispatch and no curtailment, for guaranteeing the grid connection with energy capacity on short and long run. Improving the contracting, contractual and legal maturity, develop, developing adequate financing facilities and getting reliable pre-permitted sites, get reliable pre-permitted uh, sites. Those are tasks of, ahead of the Northeast Station power connection strategies. And we are also engaged with the ADB to uh, enhance the cooperation the ATP has a, a very big experience on the regional cooperation development, such as uh, GMS, Arec, Arec in Central Asia. We are quite optimistic about Northeast Asian regional cooperation initiatives. I would like to emphasize that carbon-free power interconnection projects are key to further global and regional cooperation and reach universal, universal targets of carbon neutral societies. I would like to wish you productive discussion and fruitful results. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Yan uh, I think you mentioned a couple of interesting points, such as uh, when you referred to uh, energy efficiency. This is indeed a very important element, uh, regardless of, of, of uh, the energy source uh, and the energy efficiency does play an immense role in in uh, in and will play an immense role in, in the in the further in the future integration of traditional and um, new energy sources. Um, I would like now to pass the floor to our next speaker, uh, who will be also speaking remotely with us from uh, Dushanbe, Tajikistan, uh, Mr. Sorbon uh, Hol Mohammed Zoda. And um, he is uh, from the Ministry of Energy and uh, Water Resources of Tajikistan. As some of you or many of you have already heard, Tajikistan is the country where uh, is w w the place of birth of one of the largest uh, electricity projects recently. And we are talking about the Rogan uh, hydroelectric power station power plant and um, this project has been of a major significance uh, not only for Tajikistan but also regionally and when all these all things completed um, the, 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 the Rogan uh, hydroelectric uh, plant will um, become a part of the CASA 1000 project uh, undertaking. Uh, Mr. Hol Mohamed Zoda, your turn to speak please. Thanks my greetings for this meeting and thank uh, the charter and the organizers from Kazakhstan for organizing this event. And I'm happy to be a part of this World Energy Week and uh, part of this um, 
Gas uh, Energy Eurasian Forum and the partnership. Energy of Central Asia plays an important role in the development of the economies and ensuring social welfare of the people. An important uh, role is played uh, in achieving energy sustainability. And uh, therefore, it becomes the key driver of sustainable of achieving the sustainable development. We are considering energy sector as the key priority for the economic development. Uh, the global, the modern world is developing very quickly. In addition to the resource uh, saving technologies, alternative sources of energy, the growing demand for the energy sources in and also environmental processes, including climate change, uh, make certain changes to the um, global energy balance. And therefore, we are facing the challenge of uh, developing our capacity, including um, our projects in energy sector and uh, commercialization of the sector, reduction of uh, uh, costs and electrification of the remote areas, development of renewables, in Tajikistan, we focus about 4% of the global renewables, environmentally clean source of energy. At the moment, out of 27,000 of capacities, we have only mastered 5%. At the same time, Central Asia faces a major demand in resources. Our resources are significant, but we need to make sure that they are put to good economic use. Uh, and in order to meet the, the needs of energy uh, security in Central Asia, uh, energy development is one of the four main items on our strategic economic uh, agenda, development agenda. Uh, we have managed to attract uh, significant investments into our energy sector to the tune of several billion dollars uh, US. Uh, about uh, 20 uh, international projects uh, have been implemented in the area of energy generation and transmission. And as a part and parcel of the implementation of uh, all of these uh, projects, uh, we have installed capacity of about uh, 2,000 megawatts. Uh, uh, we also have have uh, built uh, HEP, HEP stations, uh, also uh, substations, uh, many uh, kilometers uh, for uh, of uh, transmission lines and distribution lines as well. Uh, also, uh, we uh, have been able to uh, refurbish. Uh, uh, a number of uh, substations uh, and introduced uh, metering equipment, uh, which uh, has uh, made a dent uh, not only in uh, provision of energy, uh, but also to unify energy systems uh, in Tajikistan, in different regions of Tajikistan. Uh, and uh, also we have been able to resolve the issue of uh, reliable energy supplies, which has been the bane of our economic existence uh, for the last uh, uh, 10 years uh, or so, but we, but the uh, sky is the limit in terms of our uh, future potential for energy development. And energy uh, is a sector where profitability can be attained uh, uh, pretty quickly. Uh, the government of Tajikistan now is uh, uh, moving towards integration of uh, renewable, uh, renewable energy. Uh, in order to address uh, potential uh, climate uh, change effects. Uh, we are in constant consultations uh, with the international partners and the international financing organizations uh, uh, to set up uh, solar farms uh, in Tajikistan and integration of uh, the solar farms into the energy system, unified energy system of uh, Tajikistan. Uh, we plan to have total installed capacity of about uh, 700 uh, megawatts uh, of uh, solar energy. And despite all of these undeniable successes, we also have a difficulty in making sure that uh, in winter, all our consumers have access to reliable energy. In terms of regional cooperation, 
uh, energy transport uh, is very important uh, between energy uh, surplus and energy deficient countries. Uh, and there are many energy surplus countries uh, oh, in Central Asia, but we also have energy deficient countries. And we need to make sure that we have uh, a transportation infrastructure here in Central Asia and beyond uh, towards uh, South Asia and towards uh, the uh, Middle East. Uh, Towards uh, that end, uh, we have done a lot of uh, research, and this research uh, shows uh, that uh, such projects uh, uh, will have a huge spillover effect uh, uh, across uh, different economic sectors. And uh, to implement uh, such uh, projects, uh, several international financial institutions, such as the Islamic Development Bank, the World Bank, uh, uh, the Eurasian uh, Bank uh, of Development, uh, USAID, uh, have earmarked uh, significant budgets. Our uh, potential uh, energy expert uh, volumes and the, this uh, project will be about 5 billion kilowatt hours uh, every season. Also, in the context of our regional cooperation, of our regional energy market development with support uh, from the Asian Development Bank. Uh, we're building a unified uh, Central Asia uh, energy market, uh, an energy system. To integrate uh, Tajikistan in, in terms of energy uh, production and transmission uh, into uh, Greater Central Asia. Uh, to meet all of our collective needs. And not only will, uh, uh, will, will this put us uh, in a position to export energy uh, to Central Asia, but also it will satiate uh, peak demand uh, in winter times in Tajikistan itself. I would like uh, to wish uh, all the participants uh, great discussions uh, and uh, tangible, actionable results. Thank you very much again to the organizers for this opportunity to address you all. Thank you. Mohamed Zada, I think we've heard a lot about the projects uh, currently uh, being undertaken in Tajikistan, also from the standpoint of, of integrating uh, uh, renewables and, 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 uh, and uh, the traditional sources. And uh, as I have mentioned uh, in my foreword, yes, um, Mr. Um, Hol Mohamed Zada also mentioned the CASA 1000 project. Uh, which is also another example of uh, cross-border regional cooperation. Um, the organizers of the event have reminded me that we will be running very shortly, short of time. Uh, therefore, I would like to ask each speaker to be limited to five minutes. Uh, and um, with uh, a bit of a technical difficulty now uh, coming from our next remote speaker, I would like to um, move on to our in-person, our live speaker from Uzbekistan, uh, Mr. Firuz Kurbanov, uh, Deputy Chairman of the Joint Stock Company, uh, National Company Electric Networks of Uzbekistan, who came here to join us from Tashkent. Um, Mr. Kurbanov is of a purely power generation background, uh, and um, he's been working before with uh, as a chair, as a deputy chairman of the board of regional electricity networks of Uzbekistan, Mr. Kubanov, please. The Thank floor you. is yours. Thank you. Uh, uh, first of all. Uh, I would like to thank in particular the Secretariat of the International Energy Charter uh, for organizing and staging such an important uh, conference. Uh, also would like uh, to commend uh, Kazakhstan and my dear friends and colleagues uh, from Kazakhstan for the hospitality afforded to me and to all, to all, all of us. Uh, uh, energy generation in Uzbekistan consists uh, of uh, 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 of uh, eight uh, uh, coal fired uh, power stations and 42 HEP stations. Uh, but by 2030, we plan to have diversification of our installed uh, generating capacity, and we, bring, uh, we plan uh, to bring it up uh, to 2.9 gigawatts. So that means an increase of 2.2 fold. Uh, and renewable, including HEP, will account uh, for about 40%. Uh, while gas-fired uh, power plants uh, will account for the rest. 
I would like, uh, in a nutshell, in brief, uh, also outline uh, our vision uh, for energy cooperation in Central Asia. As you know, uh, our linkages, uh, energy linkages uh, in Central Asia are diverse and they are galore. We have a, a dispatch center, unified dispatch center, which was set up back in 2009, all the way in 2009. The uh, Coordination Energy Council in Central Asia includes uh, ex officio ministers of energy from all of the Central Asian states. Uh, uh, and uh, the presidency of the council is rotating uh, between among all the member states for one year. And the uh, analysis of energy trade in Central Asia shows uh, the following. Since independence, uh, all the countries uh, of the region have taken steps uh, to bring transmission lines uh, in order to reduce dependence on neighboring countries. Uh, uh, despite the fact uh, that uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, transmission capacity, Nevertheless, they definitely have increased the reliability of national energy systems. However, that doesn't mean that there is no scope for regional trade, for transborder energy trade by building inter-system links and transmission lines, and in some cases, rebuilding them, which existed before the collapse of the Soviet Union, in order to achieve a unified energy system in Central Asia. And we have some bottlenecks here which we need to address uh, by means of transboundary construction and we need to do the following to that end right now the energy systems of uzbekistan and tajikistan are building uh, this uh, uh, linkages uh, transboundary linkages uh, in uh, in central uzbekistan and in sandro in southern uzbekistan uh, in continuation of this, uh, also another uh, power transmission power line will be built between uh, Uzbekistan and Tajikistan, which will improve the reliability of energy supply, not just for the two countries, but also potentially to Afghanistan. And uh, this also will mean that there will be backup uh, supplies uh, for both countries, uh, for Uzbekistan and, uh, and Tajikistan, in order to make a uh, peak demand, especially, especially in winter time, which is the name of the game for regional cooperation. Uh, the next uh, stage uh, is uh, uh, building another power line in, Guzata in Uzbekistan, Gazar and Tajikistan, uh, total length of 4.55 kilometers, which also will improve the reliability of energy interface of Uzbekistan, Tajikistan. Number two, Turkmenistan. Uh, and uh, th there, that can be continued on to Iran. Uh, Turkmenistan uh, has already built uh, uh, a transmission power line between uh, its, uh, its own uh, energy uh, plants uh, and the Afghan border. Uzbekistan is also building a uh, uh, high voltage uh, transmission power line to the border with uh, Turkmenistan. Considering that Turkmenistan works in parallel with uh, Iran, and uh, that also means uh, that the potential linkage, uh, linkages uh, to Afghanistan that opens up uh, new areas of, of cooperation. Uzbekistan also plans uh, to build uh, a, another power transmission line, uh, Sarakul Karakal, uh, which uh, will also uh, meet uh, energy demand uh, in and around uh, Samarkand uh, and uh, Chorjo in uh, Turkmenistan. And uh, there is now not enough capacity to achieve 100% reliability uh, across uh, on both sides of the border. Uh, also, for regional energy trade, uh, there is a new opportunity, a new avenue. Um, a DC line uh, between Turkmenistan and Iran, and uh, then on to Azerbaijan and Georgia. Georgia works in parallel with Russia, uh, Turkey, and Armenia. Uh, and uh, e when we have uh, this uh, DC linkages uh, with uh, Turkmenistan and Iran, and then on to Georgia and Azerbaijan, uh, Uzbekistan will be an energy bridge uh, between China, Central Asia, South Asia, and uh, Middle East. Uh, 
and in in the proposed model where where we'll have a ADC connection DC linkages of with uh, Turkmenistan and uh, Iran potentially we can also tap uh, such markets as uh, Turkey uh, and uh, the European Union in order to strengthen regional energy trade uh, in Central Asia uh, this uh, point in time, Uzbekistan is uh, working in order to increase its uh, export potential and uh, importation on uh, favorable conditions. Uh, we're now working on uh, power transmission lines uh, uh, in, to meet uh, that end. Uh, 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 total length of about 100 kilometers, uh, 45 uh, kilometers already built uh, in uh, Uzbekistan. And then, of course, in Afghanistan, uh, con construction has been uh, frozen because of the political situation. But once uh, completed, uh, Uzbekistan uh, can export uh, energy uh, of uh, 6 billion in a kilowatt hours. Uh. Another power line, uh, transmission power line of 64 kilometers uh, to, to value $67 million uh, also will be built uh, between Uzbekistan and uh, Afghanistan. Uh, once uh, we complete it uh, by December of uh, this year, we'll be able to import uh, about uh, 60 million kilowatt of uh, energy. Uh, so that means uh, that uh, Afghan Uzbekistan is improving cooperation with Central Asia and Afghanistan across the board in the area of energy. Thank you very much for your attention um, uh, for this very detailed uh, 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 report as i would say or presentation um, with all the numbers uh, that were uh, very accurately laid out we have just a couple of minutes left and uh, we have a uh, one question from uh, one of our attendees and the question is and and and, and i invite our distinguished speakers to uh, respond. Uh, can we hear something about energy society as well as the development of the energy industry? Well, <clears throat> thank you very much for this question. I will try to answer this as good as I can. The development of energy societies, uh, they should go hand in hand with energy industry development. Uh, the energy is inevitable part of our life as a modern society, so we are all based on energy. Uh, we all went through very personal experience yesterday when a, a small bit of our, of, of our comfort our connection went off the, of the grid. So just imagine if the electricity will go off the grid for as, as long time as the Facebook and WhatsApp was shut down. So this would really create a havoc in all, all energy, I be, uh, all societies. I believe that we are living in energy society as we are here, as all uh, countries which are using the modern form of energy. Uh, having said that, uh, we have to try to go and to make our energy society less energy war. So we have to consume, to, to try to consume less energy more efficiently to use energy efficiency methods and also to try to, to make the energy as clean as possible. Because uh, in this trend of, uh, if the previous trends are of any guise for us, so that our society or, or world will not sustain this. So we need to change the trend. And we, we have seen that in some countries, they managed to change the trend. And we, I believe that this is an important role for the Central Asia as well to follow the suite and find a proper way how to increase the economic output and, and the well-being of the society while not increasing but decreasing energy consumption. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rusnak. I think this was a very comprehensive response given the limited time we had as we don't have any more time. Um, with this, I would like, with your permission to end this session, I would like to thank again all our participants, remote and in person, who were able to join us today. Uh, I hope the, we managed to just open a little, little crack on in this in the issues that we were discussing. Unfortunately, with the time constraints and with the uh, current format of, of the meeting, um, 
um, we would not be able to dive very deep into this. But I hope we we it was a good start, and we hope to um, develop this format uh, of record meetings uh, uh, further. Thank you very much, and everybody, and uh, have a nice day. Ruslan, uh, thank you very much indeed for what I felt was an extremely informative uh, session. Uh, I think if we link back into session one, one of the uh, key uh, discussion points was about collaboration. In other words, when we think about developing energy systems for the future, um, we talked about the importance of uh, collaboration. And, and Choka, and I think one of the things that I learnt uh, in the last uh, hour was the degree of collaboration in, in Central Asia. And I think, Ruslan, you know, you moderating that session, bringing the different ministers from different parts of uh, Central Asia to talk about that collaboration, at least gave us a window into uh, that development. So, Chokana, from your perspective, collaboration critical to the development of the energy system, critical to the way in which society will access energy? Be interested in your thoughts and your observations from that session. <clears throat> Thank you, Arthur. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You're right. It's, as, as was mentioned during the session, energy is the foundation of everything, of developing economy, of, of future for life, being, well-being, and, uh, and it's, uh, it's impossible to underestimate the importance of this. And it's particularly fantastic to see all the countries, and, and especially Mongolia, taking part in the discussion. Uh, because paradoxically, uh, this region, after gaining the independence for the uh, last 30 years, for the first time in millennia, became separated by national borders. And beforehand, even before the 20th century, or even including the Soviet time, that was uh, one whole. And it's fantastic to see that, that um, cooperation regains and, and returns to normal. And it's important not only because of culture and traditional historical link, but in the light of this industrial development, um, this uh, interregional cooperation can significantly reduce both cost and expenditures of transporting energy. For instance, uh, um, and in uniting the systems and energy system of Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzstan can uh, bring benefits of. Uh, that in Toktagu water station, hydro station, which is in Kyrgyzstan, uh, they can get rid of our water uh, relieving uh, every year. And, and all these moments, there are plenty of them. And I would like to emphasize that important role is, is to develop and conduct fundamental and energy research, which is absolutely essential if we want to see and provide a smooth energy transition for, for the region. Yeah, and no, I agree. And I think, you know, I also, the last session from uh, Uzbekistan uh, was talking about, you know, the way in which transmission linkages need to be improved uh, with different uh, parts of Central Asia and the importance that that can play. And I, I think, you know, for me, this brings out the whole debate and discussion. Sometimes we think of energy systems as just isolated systems. What do we need to do in the United Kingdom to ensure our energy system moves in the right direction to meet the Paris Accords over the course of the next 20 years? And of course, yes, there are discussions about what technology and what energy sources we need to use, but actually it's a much broader conversation. And I, I really felt a couple of things is that I kind of wrote down Central Asia both as a source of energy, but also as a collaboration hub. I heard, you know, throughout the last hour, you know, speaker after speaker talk about the new developments that have been put in place to ensure greater degrees of collaboration. And as you say, you know, the changes since the previous kind of Soviet era have created the need for that. And as a consequence of that, we then get to a position of energy for everyone, or energy uh, for society. But there are, Chuck, and there are challenges uh, to basically building out these regional uh, collaborations and cooperations. The, the, presumably there will be challenges of coordination, there are challenges of regulation, there are challenges of access to investment and skills. I mean, have you got any insight on what those challenges are for the region and how each of those different countries, or as a collective, are we overcoming those as we go forward over the next number of years? Uh, 
One of the previous challenges, in my view, was the political discrepancies, which happened after the collapse of the Soviet Union, especially in, uh, for between, uh, for instance, Uzbekistan and Tajikistan, or Tajikistan and Kyrgyzstan, and some of this water uh, dispute, which, which even led uh, to uh, a conflict earlier. But uh, events like these are very, very important for uh, promoting this will of the government and of the people of the countries to, to cooperate, to collaborate together for a better future. And another essential challenge, which, which I can see, is, uh, as I mentioned before, it's a decrease in, uh, in conducting fundamental and applied research. Because we, without this, it would be impossible to, to uh, to unite the system, the energy system, because it's all a technologically advanced system, and they require new solutions, uh, which would uh, also, as well, include uh, all the fundamental research. Like we need to, we need to conduct in superconductivity and everything else. And in the context of the development of new energy systems, I mean, again, just picking up on the uh, on the last speaker where we talked essentially about uh, new distribution systems for electricity, uh, and you mentioned uh, super, you know, conductivity and some of the high voltage cables that will be required to distribute energy. Um, how does society? Uh, engage itself in these changes. I mean, in the session one, we talked about, you know, actually there's a new generation that is looking for one, access to affordable e energy, but also sustainability. How is society in Central Asia engaging in this development? Is it going with the program or is there more work that will be required to make sure that society is engaged in these quite dramatic changes that we're seeing to the energy systems in Central Asia? Uh, popularization of all energy efforts is, is absolutely essential and, and required because public opinion is getting more and more important. And with the development of today's world, with all the session, social media world and all these things, they, they, it, it's, it reflects on uh, all the um, policy making and especially in energy. For instance, today, one of the vital issues in Kazakhstan is a discussion around the uh, 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 nuclear electric, uh, electric station, which, which were going to be built possibly uh, by Russia. And it's, uh, the public opinion is very concentrated and revolving around the legacy of uh, CIMA uh, nuclear polygon, which, which was happening throughout the Soviet the time, although nuclear um, peaceful energy, peace energy, it's a, a civil energy, it's a slightly different matter. But for this, we need absolutely um, to discuss all, all these issues and discuss with the involvement uh, of the expert, because opinions are opinions, but knowledge is knowledge, and it can can be quite different things. And um, I would I would I would say that. Um, Developing energy is absolutely essential for the future of the region because we, sh we should think of the future and without energy, nothing is going to happen and we're going to be lagged behind in the um, unfolding new industrial revolution, which is happening just in front of our eyes. And interesting, you know, again, in, in that engagement of the public, um, one of the speakers talked about we shouldn't forget energy efficiency. You know, there's an awful lot of talk that we had over the last session about collaboration of access to energy sources, whether that's, you know, gas through the pipeline network, whether that's the power generation interconnectivity that is required across borders. But as we think about new energy systems, energy efficiency will play an important role. I mean, this part of the world, Central Asia, is growing, um, in, hopefully in a post-pandemic world, at, at a rapid clip in terms of GDP growth, it will return. Um, are, is the public concerned about energy efficiency, or is that something that we have to work on to help educate uh, a broader uh, consensus around the importance of it as we go forward? So far, so, so far, so good. Um, Kazakhstan managed to resolve the energy issues which emerged in the 1990s after the collapse and, and stabilize the system. However, all the difficulties, if you talk to the expert, uh, uh, keep growing and we keep losing 100 megawatts every year uh, because of the uh, old infrastructure which should, should be renewed and, and new investments should be provided. And um, I believe that not only the region but the whole humankind 
is going uh, is is going towards a united uh, network, a super a global super grid, which would stabilize uh, all energy supplied around the world. Of course, with the new technology and scientific solutions, and uh, that would reduce cost and reduce expenditures, and and that's the pressure we 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 do on our ecosystem. And uh, this is an absolutely required unite. I mean, uniting the uh, network, the grid, creating the super grid is absolutely essential for the smooth energy transition. Well, thank you for that, Chuck, and, and, and thank you for your you. Your, your comments. Uh, as I said in my opening remarks when we started, um, one of the things I'm looking forward to over the course of the next uh, three days is to learn because there's always something to learn. And I think, you know, I've written down my kind of headline is that when I think about Central Asia, uh, I was aware of it as being a critical source of energy uh, in its traditional sense, but now obviously with renewables as well. But also what I learned was it's also a basically the genesis of collaboration. It's really interesting to hear uh, that the collaboration between Central Asian countries goes back to 2009, 2010, and that collaboration builds every year by uh, by the evidence given by the speakers. So that's been you know very useful uh, as a context. I think it's useful for us to recognize that and the importance of collaboration as we think about the development of new energy systems as we go forward over the course of the next number of years. And it's been interesting, Chuck, to hear from your side how the public in general are embracing this change to the new uh, as we go forward.